After many requests and feedback, the long-awaited progression system is finally live after last night's Build Your Legend update. But that's not all that was added in this massive patch. Let's take a look. A light profile and progression system has finally been implemented. The bottom left corner of your screen will tell you your level and the amount of XP you have accumulated thus far. Every matchmaking game you play an artifact outside of the Call to Arms event will grant you some amount of XP. The first three wins per week will grant you 1000 XP as a weekly bonus. The naming convention of casual and expert modes has been changed as well, and they are now called standard or prize play. Both of these categories provide XP. There are other ways to obtain extra XP that will depend on what happens during the game. These bonuses are added at the end of the game and called playstyle awards. These include not losing any heroes during the game, winning with one health left, or by earning 100 or more gold. Here is a list of all known playstyle awards. Remember that you can only earn 3 per match, so aiming for more will be fruitless. Reaching a certain profile level will grant you special player icons similarly to other games with this kind of system. Not only that, but you will also be awarded card packs and tickets at certain levels. However, you can only earn a total of 15 packs per season. It is currently unknown when the season will end, but it was stated that seasons would be a few months in length. One undocumented change in this update is changes to the starting items bundle that new players get upon purchasing the game. You now only get 5 Cult Arms packs and 2 event tickets, down from the previous 10 and 10. Advancing profile levels will have you earn the difference and extras. A skill rating system has also been implemented this patch. Resetting every season, you start at 1 skill rating and go up all the way to 75. Every time you beat an opponent with a higher skill rating, your skill rating will go up. Some of you might enjoy Constructed and others might favor Draft, so there is an independent rating number for each mode. One does not affect the other. Your skill rating cannot decrease, but it is assumed that your hidden MMR will, so your skill rating will always show the highest skill rating you have gotten that season. There are still many unknowns about this skill rating system, but it feels like it's in its infancy and will be fleshed out in future updates. Most of the previous features were advertised and expected. However, much to the surprise of the community, Valve has also updated certain cards. The Seat Story Cup is a major tournament that is currently underway, and it'll be interesting to see how participants handle these card changes as they shift the meta drastically. Balance changes have become an integral part of digital card games, although they have been used as only a last resort effort to fix the meta, as players dislike having their collection change drastically overnight. However, they are important to keep the game healthy and diverse and take advantage of the game's digital nature. Valve mentioned that they will be doing incremental balancing between sets, which is great to hear and forecast the meta not being left broken for long periods of time. Most of the changes in this update are welcome and some of them have been heavily requested by the community. Let's have a look at the changes. Firstly, we have Axe, whose base stats have been changed to 6 attack, 2 armor and 10 health compared to the previous 7 attack, 2 armor and 11 health. These changes may not look like much initially, but 6 attack is significantly weaker than 7. Many heroes that previously died to Axe after combat will now survive with 1 health. Zeus, Ogre Magi, Bounty Hunter, and the newly improved Bloodseeker will all be able to survive a hit from Axe. The 10 health change is not as impactful, but still relevant since now it can die to things like a Blink Dagger buffed Phantom Assassin or Assassinate at base health. Bloodseeker is now changed to a 7-7 from 7-6. Similar to the reasoning earlier, Bloodseeker has much more survivability now and can utilize his passive ability a lot better. His signature has also been changed from 5 mana to 4. These buffs won't push Bloodseeker into heavy constructed play, but he will probably see a lot more play in draft. Cheating Death, much to the joy of the community, has finally gotten its nerfs. It now reads, active, with the cooldown of 1, give a unit death shield this round. May only be used if there is an allied green hero in this lane. This is significantly worse from what it did before. You can only protect one unit per round, although without any random chance, and it'll cost you an action to do so. These changes are so heavy that it is unlikely that we will see this card played and constructed anymore. Another community requested change, Dry Ranger's Gust, has also received some nerfs. Now reading, silence an enemy hero and its allied neighbors this round. A single Gust can no longer reliably stop your opponent from playing any cards in a given lane, which heavily guts the previously Tier 1 blue-green combo deck. Many players hated uninteractability, but with these changes can now play around Gust. We don't know how much this will affect Drow's playability, but one thing is for sure, blue-green combo has become significantly weaker. Perhaps it's time for blue-green token. Jasper Daggers now costs 5 gold instead of 7, and has an additional effect in the form of a new keyword dubbed Equip Effect, which will trigger immediately after the item is equipped to a hero. Jasper Daggers Equip Effect is to purge your opponent's effect from the equipped hero. 
which makes the item significantly stronger. Jasper Daggers is now one of the two cheapest non-basic weapon items and is very likely going to see a lot more draft and constructed play. This is mostly because it can remove the stun or silence condition from a hero. This is also the first true counterplay for cards like Gust and passives from cards like Tidehunter. Gust just got nerfed even harder. Quicken is another new keyword that was added this update and appended at the end of line's active ability. Quicken reduces the cooldown of your ability by 1 to a minimum of 1. This means that line starts with the same cooldown of 4, but after using the ability, subsequent cooldowns will become shorter and shorter. This is a pretty cool buff, and it'll be interesting to see how it affects line's pick rate and draft. Outworld Devourer has now 7 health instead of his previous 6, but in this case it probably still won't make much of a difference, since Devourer's passive still relies on coin flips and his signature card is probably the worst in the game. Timbersaw also gained an additional effect on his passive. Now reading, Timbersaw has plus 1 armor for each of its attackers, and each of Timbersaw's attackers have minus 1 armor. This is a nice buff, but we are not sure if it's enough to put Timbersaw in a better position in drafts. It's unlikely that it'll have any impact in Constructed. Those were all the card changes. Valve is offering refunds for the affected cards during the buyback period which starts today and lasts till January the 4th. So you can sell your cards at the peak price it was 24 hours prior to the update announcement. However, cards that were opened from packs do not qualify for the buyback. In addition to all of these changes, there are also a few bug fixes as well that you can read in the update notes. Link in the description. The update is also viewable by clicking the top right script icon in the client. And that's all for this update. Valve has said that they will be away for the holidays, so any future updates to the game will be in January. Let us know if you like the new progression and skill rating systems, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.